Well, something that maybe a few people might suggest would be ridiculous. He's not a bird. He's not a plane. Actually, he may be Jewish. That's right, Superman Jewish. And that's what one rabbi is claiming in this book called Up, Up, and Oy Bay. How Jewish History, Culture, and Values Shaped the Comic Book Hero. Joining me in New York, Rabbi Simcha Weinstein. If nothing else, Rabbi, it's a great title for a book. But I have to tell you, you know, this is the most highly anticipated uh, uh, movie of the summer, perhaps the year, coming out next week, Superman Returns. I saw it this afternoon. I went to a preview. I did not walk away saying, oh yeah, Superman's Jewish. Now, when did you have this revelation? It's important to note, firstly, off the bat, Jews are not superheroes, superheroes are not Jews. However, the creators of Superman were both Jewish, and I think they created their, their character Superman with a particularly Jewish worldview. And there are certainly some specifics you identify in your book as to why you think that perhaps he is Jewish, and, and we can go right to uh, some of the names uh, used in the Superman character, Kal-El. That is his name. What's the Jewish connection? So Kal-El is actually a Hebrew word. It means the voice of God or the vessel of God. Perhaps consciously, subconsciously, consciously, these creators may not have been sure that this was a Hebrew word, but they grew up in a Jewish environment which is rich in storytelling. And the same thing for Superman's birth father, Jor-El, also a Jewish connection there? Also, uh, and you can also draw a very clear parallel with the story of Moses. If you think about it, Mo Moses is sent away in a reed basket. He becomes the people's savior. He's raised in a foreign culture, a foreign land. So too, Superman has the same experience. He's sent away in a rocket ship. He's lived in a foreign country, a foreign land, and he becomes the people's savior. Right. And, and, and recognizing all along, uh, Rabbi... Superman, not real, right? We, we know this is, okay, just want to make sure that's clear. And you also make an obvious parallel, I think, is Superman as an outsider. The Jewish people have right. long been known as outsiders, correct? Right. Yes. The Jewish people were known in America as aliens, which, coincidentally, Superman himself is an alien. And the environment in which Superman was created was that in, in the 30s and 40s, it was difficult for Jews to get jobs. Uh, they levitated towards the comic book industry, which was not seen as highbrow. It actively encouraged Jews to take part as being comic book creators. And if you think about it, the characters themselves, they have double identities. So too, the, the creators of superheroes also have double identities. Many of them change their names. Well, what about Lois Lane? Now, this is, this is a, a woman that uh, Superman, obviously, is affection soon. And you say that he symboli she symbolizes the non-Jewish woman fantasy that a lot of Jewish men have. Is that true? In fact, Jerry uh, Siegel and Joseph Schuster, the creators of Superman, they themselves said that Lois Lane represented the girl they couldn't get in high school. They themselves joined a gym. They tried to build their bodies, build their physiques to become like Superman. <laughs> all right. Well, people, I guess, will believe what they will believe. But you're pointing it all out. And again, thank you for naming your book uh, uh, title. It was so much fun to say, Rabbi Simcha Weinstein. I appreciate you joining us tonight. My the pleasure. book, as you see, is up, up, in oy vey! And it's available online starting next week. Superman Returns, by the way, will be in theaters next week as well. And you can judge for yourself. Oy vey. Okay, and tonight's...